we can went into it with the unique understanding that Janice has of birth trauma and A, how to avoid it and B, also how to heal from this. And it goes beyond just the birth process. It is very much a spiritual connection to creating life and love and all of these things that are so important that I think we underestimate the importance of and we forget and we lose touch and we are constantly bombarded with the mind control that has exploited sexuality and exploited love and creation and all these things for the evildoer's purpose. And without further ado, I am very excited about today's talk. Ladies and gentlemen, Janice Barcelo. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Great. Are you all holding on to your seats? Okay. So we're going to go into some very deep territory today because sexuality is one of the most important um, areas of spiritual energy. And it is one of the areas where we are being heavily manipulated. And so I feel compelled to talk about this topic, even though I'm shaking like a leaf, knowing that this is one of the most difficult topics I could have chosen to talk about. Uh, but it's this important, so I'm willing to put my ass on the line uh, to share this information with you. Thank and, you. And, yeah. <laughs> Before I get started, I just want to ask everybody to join in a little prayer with me. And if you feel comfortable holding hands with the people next to you, I'd ask you to do that. <laughs> try, not to be, try not to be embarrassed, and if you are, this is a serious moment. This is a serious moment because we have um, the dark forces who are getting ready to erect a temple to Baal in New York City on Tuesday. Um, at the same time, they're going to be erecting this thing in London. So they're going to be trying to open a portal for demonic entities to come through. So what I would like to do is to set an intention with the power of our energy today. Let me, let me say right now, we're calling in the energy of 100% pure love, pure love into our space, the energy of the loving creator, the loving force behind all of life. And we're asking that energy to be present with us today and to guide my words and to guide my heart so that I can share this information with you clearly and it can be easily received. And we are intending this day to hold up mirrors to the dark forces and any evil they try to put out reflects right back to them. I want you all to visualize them in a circle and we are now surrounding them with mirrors and any evil thing they try to do goes right back to them and can affect only them, only their families, only their lives, their property, their businesses, not us and not this planet. And if they dare, to attempt to open a portal, that is going to be a one-way portal for them to exit. That no, no evil energies can enter with our intention to keep that portal an exit-only portal. So thank you for joining in this prayer with me today. So we are going to be talking today about, let's see if I can figure out how to work this, human sexuality, pornography, and the attack on human love. And I chose this picture because it shows a young man whose sexual imprinting is happening as a teenager. And this is a very serious situation we have going on on our planet right now. We have... 
When I was doing a search for pictures of human love or pure love, all right, I found this picture. And I want everybody to feel into the part of your body that you experience when you look at this picture of purity, of goodness, and of love. Okay, I found a couple of these pictures that are indicative to me of love, genuine, authentic love. Can you feel this? Can you feel the goodness here, the inherent purity of what love is? Because there's a difference. When I type in the words human love and look for pictures, the major overwhelming majority of what comes up is this. Notice where you feel it, because you're bound to feel this kind of stuff in your genitals. And as soon as you feel it, I want you to know that you are being manipulated every time you see a picture like this, masquerading as love, or this. Now, I'm not going to be coming to you from a place today of self-righteousness because this, my friends, is me. Ten years ago, the sexual priestess. Seriously, this is who I thought I was. I thought I was doing sexual healing work. I was fire dancing naked in front of hundreds of people because I was an erotic priestess and I knew how to attract men with the charms of my body and the promise of fleeting physical gratification. But honestly, folks, what I really wanted was love. And I think that's what we all want at the core of our beings is to find enduring and authentic human love. And all of these sexual escapades and promiscuity are not going to get us there. And just the opposite. Just the opposite. So how did we get to this place where we actually think that this erotic stuff is love? I'm going to tell you how we got there. <laughs> The Rockefeller Foundation, the Rockenfelder, these people are German Jews, as Eustace Mullins has taught us. Yeah. The Rockefeller Foundation has their hands in every aspect of the manipulation of human sexuality. Okay, they spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars since the 1930s, that's a lot of money, okay, to fund what they call sexual research so that they could trigger what we now call the sexual revolution. We're all free now, right? We're all free to be in situations that are not loving. We're all free to be erotic as we want to be, having sex with as many people as we want to have sex with in whatever way we want to do it thanks to the sexual revolution, and thanks to the manipulation of our minds. Alfred Kinsey, how many people in the room have heard of Alfred Kinsey? Okay, so Alfred Kinsey's research on you know, the sexual behavior of the human male and the sexual behavior of the human female, this is the foundation of the sexual revolution. Of course, the Rockefellers funded Kinsey's research and his research has been used to change the attitudes and the sexual behavior of the American people. All right, if you would have uh, talked to a married couple in the 1910, for example, they probably had a much more conservative sexuality than we do today. And that's because of these people and what they've done to our culture. That, that is their goal, that is the goal of Kinsey's research, to radically change the morals of American society and the way that we behave. 
Here's what they wanted to promote, promiscuity. We've got that going on. Major League, I'm guilty of this. Homosexuality, pornography, pederasty, pedophilia, sodomy. We're going to go into this topic today. Fornication and adultery, all of which used to be illegal, by the way, not very long ago. Kinsey's research has been used to make, to make this not illegal anymore. All right, so all of these things are now being pushed to become acceptable to the American people, including transgenderism. And we'll, go, we'll talk about that in a little while. I want to stress that what we're seeing is a Luciferian morality. All right, the Luciferians, their religion involves having orgies. All right, their religion involves ra raping children and murdering children. Their religion involves harnessing what is the creator's energy to bring forth life, harnessing that beautiful love-based, life-creating force for evil. And we are participating. And I'm going to show you how. So let me just briefly say, Alfred Kinsey was a sexual psychopath. He believed that the only unnatural sex act is what you cannot perform. Everything's natural, and it's all legitimate and good. That includes bestiality, incest, prostitution, group sex, right, transvestitism, sadomasochism. All of this is normal and good. It's beneficial. Hey, if it feels good, do it. That's what Kinsey's attitude was. That's what the Rockefeller's attitude is. That's what the Luciferians promote. Am I right? We all know this. So again, Kinsey worked to overthrow all laws prohibiting any of these things. And I want to tell you how disgusting and sick in the mind that this man was. Okay? He took a toothbrush during masturbation, as you can read, and shoved it up into his urethra. And he filmed it for his pornographic collection, which he boasted was the second largest in the world at the Kinsey Institute at the University of Indiana, which still exists to this day. He circumcised himself with a pocket knife. Okay, here's, here's the, the most psychotic thing I've read about him. He took a rope and tied the rope around his scrotum. He took the other end of the rope, put it up on a pipe over the ceiling, wrapped it around his hand. He was standing on a chair, and then he jumped off the chair. And he hung himself by his balls <laughs> from the ceiling. <laughs> Welcome to the world of Rockefeller-funded sex research, my friends. So he died early, of course, from a disease called orchitis, or I don't know how to say it, which is a lethal infection of his testicles because of all of, the, all of what he was doing to himself. Obviously, this man was ritually tortured in childhood. Obviously, this is a victim of satanic ritual abuse. There can be no question about this based on his activities. All right, he also believed that pedophilia was good and that the public didn't recognize the benefits of adults having sex with children. How beneficial this is for children. Okay, if society didn't make such a big deal about it, the children would have no problems. It's no problem if you steal their innocence and their purity and try to rape them and steal their life force. That's not a problem. It's good for them so that they too can grow up to become psychopaths and Luciferians. All right, so his research involved the molestation of children. And as you can see, the bottom two here, he had a four-year-old that was 
manipulated, in his words, for 24 hours straight and said to have 26 orgasms in that 24-hour period. 11-month-old said to have 14 orgasms in 38 minutes. All right, let's take a look, a quick look at one of the charts out of Kinsey's books. And look at the age of the children, five months, three orgasms. We don't know how long that took. And on it goes, folks. A 10-year-old, 24 hours manipulated straight. A four-year-old, 24 hours manipulated straight. These children obviously were being tied down or restrained in some way so that a pedophile could sexually molest them for Kinsey's research. Let's have a quick look at Kinsey's definition of orgasm in children. Extreme tension with violent convulsions. Sudden heaving and jerking of the whole body. Whole body or parts of it spasmodically twitching. Violent jerking of the penis. Groaning, sobbing, violent cries. Sometimes with an abundance of tears with the, with the young children. Extreme trembling, collapse, loss of color, sometimes the fainting of the subject. This is all orgasm in Kinsey's mind. Here's a description. These are descriptions straight out of Kinsey's books. The legs often become rigid with muscles knotted and toes pointed, eyes staring or tightly closed, hands grasping, mouth distorted sometimes with the tongue protruding. And check this one out. Some boys suffered excruciating pain and may scream if movement is continued. Members of this group fight away from the partner, not the molester, the partner. And they may make violent attempts to avoid clim climax, although they derive definite pleasure from this. So welcome to the world of Alfred Kinsey and his research team. So this research of Alfred Kinsey's has been used to prove that children are sexually active from birth and also that they're naturally homosexual. Kinsey was a homosexual, a pedophile and a homosexual. I'll call him a bisexual because he also had sex with women, but he preferred having sex with young boys. All right, so his research is said to have proven that human children have sexual instincts before puberty. Now, I am going to stress that this would distinguish humans from every other mammal. Okay, mammals become sexually active when they are ready to reproduce. And such a difference between mankind and all other mammals cannot be explained through biological evolution. All right, the fact that we believe that we should be having sex without reproduction and that that's beneficial in the way the Creator designed us to do it cannot be explained through biological evolution, but it can be explained through mind control. So what they wanted was to legitimize pedophilia and get people to believe that children can benefit from sex with adults. What they wanted, because again, this is a Luciferian agenda. For those who don't have a clarity about what that is, that means there is a rebellion against the Creator. There is a rebellion against the Creator's design. And so what we want to do is destroy the natural order if we're Luciferian. We want to destroy the Creator's design. We want to mock it at every opportunity we can get. And especially the most sacred aspects of it, which involve the creation of life, the renewal and regeneration of life. All right, so they wanted to convince Americans, and they have, that physical pleasure is what matters. It's what it's all about. Orgasms. Even in the birth community right now, you've got doulas telling birthing mothers to bring vibrators to their labor. <laughs> Come on, let's whack off while we're bringing a baby into the world. Good job, guys. We've got midwives who are 
like Ina Mae Gaskin, okay, a Jewess who circumcised her own son and circumcises babies, all right, telling the world that she manipulates women genitally when she attends their birth. And this is happening in the world of the birth community who are very big on the promotion of orgasmic birth. This is a very big topic these days. Because orgasm is what it's about after all, folks, right? We want that physical pleasure. Forget the spiritual ramifications of what we're doing or the way it influences our children. Just have sex, have sex, have sex. As much sex as you can. All right, they wanted to normalize sex without reproduction. They have succeeded overwhelmingly. And reproduction without sex. This is the world of IVF, artificial reproductive technologies, also controlled by the Israelis. They wanted to have divorce, replace marriage. And we're seeing that happen, aren't we? Abortion, replace birth. In the African-American community in New York City, there are more abortions than there are births. We've got a Planned Parenthood in every African-American community in New York City. It's called genocide, folks. And again, this is the Luciferian Rebellion. We just need to see the ways that we are participating in it. So Kinsey's research has been used to change social policies. First, we saw gay rights happening, right? We saw homosexuality become a sexual orientation instead of a, an emotional disorder. Okay, now they're doing this with pedophilia. The American Psychological Association, also wholly controlled by the Jews, came out with the DSM-5 in which it said pedophilia is a sexual orientation. They were immediately called on it, and they said, oh, we made a mistake. Of course, it's a mental disorder. We'll go back in and fix that. But they're going, they're slowly trying to normalize pedophilia and present it in the same way that they have presented homosexuality. Legalizing abortion. All right, this is one of the major major things that's happening is that because of all the sex that we're having, children are being conceived haphazardly and then they're being killed. I'm guilty of this uh, because I had a baby that was deformed and I chose to abort my baby in the fifth month. It's a long story, but if I had known that they were gonna burn my baby to death in my womb, I probably wouldn't have chosen abortion. I chose abortion because it was normal in my culture. And only now I understand the torment that my baby went through because of my choice. So this is a very serious thing. And it did influence my ability to give birth afterwards. So abortion is a very, very important topic. I can't go into it very deeply today. All right, we also now have sex ed for children. I'm gonna go into that very deeply. When um, Kinsey wrote his book on the sexual behavior of the human female, that same year, Hugh Hefner released the first issue of Playboy. And that's not a coincidence, folks. Hefner quoted Kinsey's research as a foundation for the release of Playboy because obviously women are just like cats in heat. The only difference between women and cats in heat is that cats in heat are trying to reproduce and women aren't. See, women just want to have physical pleasure. And this is all backed up by Kinsey's research. So we have evidence to support this the nature of, of female humans. So within seven years of the release of pornography, <laughs> we have forcible rapes committed by males under 18 increasing by 86%. All right, within 40 years, from 1960 to 1999, a 400% increase 
in reported forcible rapes. Is that connected, do you think? When the average age for boys to begin watching pornography is 11 and four out of 10 boys between 14 and 17 are saying they regularly watch pornography. Now here's what's happening. Okay, the girls in this age group who are now sexting, sending na naked pictures of themselves to other boys because pornography permeates the culture, their culture. They're being coerced into engaging in sexual acts that they're not comfortable with by their boyfriends who have seen these you know, perverse sexual acts in pornography. So the boys are wanting to replay what they've seen because they think it's normal. This is what they're growing up with. This is what they're being fed, is the pornographic view of human sexuality, in which anal sex is a huge trend. Now let me go into this topic very deeply, because there is um, so many survivors now of satanic ritual abuse coming forward and talking about and revealing what's really going on with this stuff. So here we're being told by a survivor, her name is Marion Knox, that sodomy is the foundation of the satanic order, that it's called the Key of David by the Rothschild Illuminati, that it's Satan's sex, or Satan's new birth of a child. She says the Illuminati is Lucifer's church, the mystical body of Satan, and sodomy is like being born again into the mystical body of Satan. It's the initiation into the light of Lucifer that's achieved by sodomy of a three-year-old. Now check this out, these are all her words, okay? The initiation of the three-year-old is the beginning requirement of someday rising up into the ranks of a group that is considered to be the Illuminati. A lot of people think of the Illuminati as being a political group, but in other sense, it's a brotherhood of sodomites. That's like a family. Sodomites feel a family bond, whether they're related or not. She also says this, Sodomy attacks the nerves at the base of the spine. It causes something neurological to happen within the brain. So it, change, it changes the way the mind works, especially when you get the three-year-olds. And it affects the way the person thinks, like nothing else will. For a person to be able to develop multiple personalities they would have to be sodomized between the ages of two and four. Let that register. <coughs> this is more of her words. Sodomy has a spiritual component in it that is far more sinister than anybody recognizes. It is the most underrated evil power to the general public. But to the people who are in the know, this is the ultimate rebellion against God. This is what they hope to use to gain the whole human race for their side and to defeat God himself. Now let me just put this in my own words, okay? When you take your penis, this amazing life-creating organ, and you put it where excrement comes out, instead of into the orifice in which life can be created, you are saying, fuck you, to the creator. Your life-creating program means nothing to me. My sexuality is now about excrement, so that I can align myself with the Luciferian world. And hey folks, I grew up with pornography too. Okay, my first marriage, I allowed my husband to penetrate me anally because I thought that's normal, all right? That's what they do in pornography. Now I'm just absolutely horrified at what I have allowed happen to my body and to my soul through my own sexual behavior, which has been conditioned by these Luciferian forces. And it's not easy taking it back. 
Here's Hugh Hefner himself, right? The origins of pornography, saying, it is a statement of rebellion without question. Now here's what people most need to know, in addition to the sodomy piece. Please forgive me for how painful this is. I wish I could present this in a way that would not be painful. I haven't found the way to do it. So the porn industry is replete with demonic influences and I want to stress, I'm in the middle of writing my book about how to have uh, an ecstatic love-filled birth and I realized you cannot have an ecstatic love-filled birth if you've had a conception that's based on porn. We've got to get rid of these pornographic influences in, in our lives. And I start researching and all these people who are in the industry are coming out and saying things like this. I'm not exaggerating by stating that many Los Angeles porn industry professionals are Satanists and have the intention of destroying those who believe in God. Another one says, in porn, the producers and the film editors who edit the final film for the public cast spells into the final cuts of the film, and these spells are to cast demons into the films so that when you watch the films, these demons can influence your lives. Here we have a survivor of satanic ritual abuse, Kurt Barker, whose books I'm sharing at my table. I encourage people to please look at his work. Okay, Kurt was raised, by the way, in a satanic cult to be Kathy. Every time he was with the Luciferian cult, he had to dress as a girl, present himself as a girl. He was involved, uh, had to do child pornography and sexually service these psychopaths while he was dressed as a girl because they get off on this kind of shit. This is the agenda of transgenderism, folks, right, is to separate the children from their core personalities and create alter personalities that will be in service to these psychopaths. There's nothing normal about wanting to have surgical alteration of your genitals, nor is it normal for these psychopath doctors to be strapping babies to boards and cutting off the most sensitive part of their penises. This is all connected. Every aspect of this is part of the Luciferian design. Kurt Barker says, when Bob and other Satanists were creating child pornography and other forms of pornography as well, they considered that what they were doing was a magical ritual. Alistair Crowley called it sex magic. They considered the creation of pornography to literally be a satanic ritual in which Satan would give them power in the world. Because that's what pornography is. It is satanic. It is the satanic takeover of human sexuality. Pornography is created with an intention, and that intention is Luciferian manipulation of the psyche of the viewer. Pornography can be compared to the use of voodoo dolls, to establishing a psychic connection with the viewers, to demonically influence them, to block their connection with the real creator. And this is from somebody else entirely. The porn industry is well aware and use the demonic side to infiltrate porn. Whether the actors are aware or not, many orgy scenes are in fact rituals. This is what they do, right? But you will never see when the actors and directors meet at 6 a.m. in the morning, drink their potions, and cast their spells before they start recording for the public. The use of pornography provides a direct gateway for demonic influence, and every video or website opens another door. When a person uses pornography, he is allowing for the demonic forces which control the porn industry to infiltrate his life and his home. 
What we're talking about here is spiritual bondage. Whenever a person watches pornography, a person is actually tapping in to the demonic realm. In addition to defiling a person, pornography brings a person under the influence and even control of the demonic entities that control it. So every time you are impulse to look at pornography after this, I'm going to encourage you to remember this talk and remember that these films contain demonic influences intended to affect our lives. We're bringing this influence into our bedrooms, into our relationships, and into the conception of our children. And what kind of children do you think we'll be calling in if while we're having sex we have visions of incubi and succubi that we've seen in pornography films entering into our sexual activity. And what kind, of, what kind of consciousness will the children have if they're conceived in this kind of an energy? That's not a coding for love, folks. That's a coding for love's opposite that our children will be imprinted with. And we have got to be aware of what this is and protect ourselves and our children. All right, so the demonic influence, I'm asking the question, is this why it's so addictive? There's more going on, all right? But one person said pornography is more addicted than crack cocaine, because you can get the crack cocaine out of your body, but you can't get the images out of your mind. Right, they stay with you. They influence you. They get wired into your brain. It's called imprinting. And the more you masturbate to these images, right, the stronger these neurological highways become. You know the, the expression, neurons that fire together, wire together? All right, when you create a, a neurological highway, looking at a screen and masturbating over and over and over again, you are changing the structure of your brain, literally. You're changing the brain chemistry and rewiring your circuitry to get off from masturbating to a screen, but certainly not to make a connection in intimacy or love. Very different things. Very, very different things. All right, so this neurological programming equals mind control. Now we have young boys being programmed through pornography, to have dissociative sex. What does that mean? We're going to have sex that separates us from our soul, separates us from God, separates us from other people, and from the capacity to connect in love. That's what young boys are being trained now, how to have sex. These boys who, I just said, 14 to 17 years old, 4 out of 10 are saying they regularly watch pornography, these boys are not going to have any physiological understanding of what love is because all they've experienced physiologically is masturbating to images on a computer screen. This is called imprinting, folks. This is called taking the natural love-filled order by the balls and saying, you're out of here. You, we're batting you out of here completely because we're getting the kids. We're getting your kids. And we're coming into the schools now. Wait till you see what they're doing in the schools. How much time do I have, please? 15 minutes. How much? 15 minutes. Shit. Let me say... <laughs> let me say, I will go over if I'm allowed, and let me say that... I'm so happy you're responding well. <laughs> Let me say that this presentation is two and a half hours long in its total. I did it before I came to see how long it was, and I've had to delete like a hundred slides to present this, what I'm presenting to you. If you want the full deal, 
I have a copy of it recorded on a double DVD. I couldn't fit it on one DVD. That's how much information there is. So if you want the full thing, please come and get the DVD, okay, when we're done. Um, here's one, one thing that a, a young man said. Okay, he said, alien is how I describe how it felt when I tried to have sex with real women. It's like I've gotten so conditioned to sitting in front of a screen, jerking it, that my mind considers that to be normal sex instead of real actual sex. Notice the word love is absent from this conversation. Because this is not about love at all. What these boys are being conditioned to participate in is not love. And this is on top of their circumcision. This is on top of being sexually tortured in infancy. So what are the chances that these boys are going to be able to make a connection in love? And it, I mean, come on, man. We got we to gotta stop, take our kids back. <laughs> Let me quickly say this, okay? Porn addiction causes brain damage. How is that? There's erototoxins. This is a new word in the scientific community. Get released into the bloodstream while viewing pornography that alter brain chemistry and cause progressive brain damage. The frontal lobes atrophy or shrink. They call this hypotrophy. By the way, the frontal lobes are the part of our brain that connect us directly with the divine mind. Uh -uh. They're not going to have any of that. They're going to be attacking this part of our brain every chance that they get. And they do it with expert skill. All right, what that part of our brain also does, it says, if I'm here and I'm arguing with you, the part of my brain, the frontal lobes, would say, is this an appropriate time for me to get violent? Am I in danger? Do I need to like, get violent and protect myself? All right, but when your frontal lobes are shrunk, there's going to be no control. Impulse control is way less. So you, you can get violent very quickly, right? Or you can have no control over whether you're watching pornography. And I started to think, When I heard the word hypofrontality, where had I heard that before? In my book, Birth Trauma and the Dark Side of Modern Medicine, which I have out here, please come and buy my book. I quote a Jewish French intellectual who is talking about what's going on with the Jews. What's, what's going on here, okay? What he says is this about circumcision. Circumcision brings about a hypertrophy, same language, of the organ of moral sense. We have noticed, we have known for 40 years that this gland is atrophied among insane people. It is hypertrophied with the Jews. Circumcision affects the Jewish psyche and now the American psyche because the Jewish takeover of the American medical system meant that circumcision is now mainstreamed. And let me say this straight out, okay? With all love in my heart for people who are raised in this cult called Judaism, Judaism is a Luciferian cult. This is what it is. They are ritually torturing infants. 50,000 chickens were sacrificed in New York City last September. So animal sacrifice is still alive and well in this, what we call religion. But this is a cult that is hurting children, hurting animals, hurting our world. And if you identify with this cult tribally, I'm gonna encourage you, just like any other survivor of satanic ritual abuse, to get some healing and separate yourself from this tribal identity. Because like any victim of satanic ritual abuse, Jay Parker, Kurt Barker, Kathy O'Brien, what we want to do is get out of it and get back on the path to love and to the real loving force behind creation. So circumcision, this is 
by a Jewish person, by the way, affects the Jewish psyche and endocrine system. What happens is when you perform this operation on the eighth day, okay, you set free some hormones contained in, contained in what he calls the internal genital organ. It will be underdeveloped and at the same time it will liberate other organs which will run without the brakes on. Wasn't that the language that we just talked about in pornography? Let me just skip this, this paragraph up above and go to the last two. What's switched off is the potential to control their speculations. Okay, so we come up with these monstrosities that are capitalism, Marxism, Freudianism, communism, all Jewish creations. And the hormones will fixate upon the reproductive genital gland, which will make the Jews womanizers and sex fiends. And of course, now it's all American men who can have this tendency due to circumcision. Is it any mystery that it is the Jews that control pornography completely? Is it any mystery why you will never see an intact man in a porn film? And if you do see an intact man in a porn film, please let me know. I would be interested to know about it because it's overwhelmingly circumcised men who have been harmed, who have been hurt, who have been tortured in infancy to create a covenant with Lucifer. All right, the real creator does not say, here's a beautiful penis with the foreskin that protects the glands, and when that foreskin meets with the vaginal wall, it creates neurochemicals of love and bonding in the male body, Cut it off so you could create a covenant with me. That's not God, folks. That is God's adversary. Okay, and regarding the sexual conditioning, I needed to say this because they are doing research right now. I don't want to go into this too deeply. I just wanted you to know about it where let me, the, uh, let me read the part that's underlined. Early sexual experience with partners that are scented with a neutral or even a noxious odor induces a preference for scented partners in subsequent choice tests. These preferences can be induced by injections of morphine or oxytocin. What they're doing is they're trying to get little children, or little baby rats in this case, right, to become sexually attracted to corpses. or to people of the same sex. And they can do this with injections of morphine and oxytocin, both of which are used during hospital birth. Isn't that so interesting? Isn't that so interesting? Conversely, conditioned place or partner references, that would be having, having uh, an attraction to somebody of the opposite sex with whom you can create life, can be blocked with the use of other drugs, in this case called naloxone. Isn't that special? Look at all the good things that they can do and that they're doing research on. So now what this guy is saying, what his research team is really saying is Early sexual experience has the power to wire in all kinds of sexual orientations. What we call sexual orientations, including fetishes, including sexual acts and preferences that would otherwise be repugnant, such as anal sex. A virgin male can be conditioned to prefer a same-sex partner or even to desire having sex with animals or corpses. Pharmaceutical drugs can be used to trigger these preferences, and so can pornography. These are weapons. And this is why we have brothels in Germany where animals are tied down like this so men can come up and stick their penises in the bodies of the animals. 
And please remember, this is happening all over the Luciferian community. This is not rare. Pornography can also induce a preference for children. I'm just going to show you a very few images, and these are very light images compared to what's out there from Playboy, Hustler, Penthouse years ago. All right? A baby masturbating. Now think about what's happening to the men who are viewing pornography and looking at these images. And this little boy is the main course, being sent to Washington. <laughs> Isn't that a funny joke? And these little girls must have been part of uh, Kinsey's research. Here they are tied down and probably being sexually man manipulated by one of Kinsey's pedophiles who's keeping track on a pad of how long it took to induce how many orgasms. Thank you. Thank you to the porn industry. Let me quote this amazing woman, Dr. Judith Reisman, who is also Jewish, okay? So we have good people in the Jewish community doing very important work, and I encourage more of it. She says, you cannot do the kind of programming of people's brains, minds, memories, and bodies because the connection between the brain goes all the way down through the eyes. It comes in, right? The visual comes in, right down the spinal cord to the genitals. It travels all the way. She says it much more eloquently than I did. Right? Way down from the retina, all the way down the central nervous system and into the genitals. You can't show people those kinds of pictures and arouse them that way and not think they're going to act out, either positively on somebody who agrees or negatively on somebody who doesn't agree. That's what's going to happen. And you simply cannot do that to billions of people at one time, to masses of the population, and certainly not to young children. I don't know if you could see this one, but there's a pedophile in the bushes here with a sign that says sex education. Bob, there was a request for me to go overtime. How do you feel about that? You can have about 10, 15 minutes. Okay, minutes. great. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Let me try to run through this quickly. So sex education is another tool used for the sexual programming of children. Planned Parenthood is a major provider of this sex education. They have what's called the Comprehensive Sex Education Program now, um, bringing these pornographic images to children as young as four. And the Rockefeller Foundation, of course, is a major funder of Planned Parenthood. Very quickly, Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood said, our objective is unlimited sexual gratification, right? That's what it's all about. Without the burden of children, we do not want women to have to suffer by having children. The marriage bed is the most degenerative influence in the social order. This is the founder of Planned Parenthood. The most merciful thing that the large family does to one of its infant members is to kill it. Big families are the last thing they want. And this is the reality of abortion. And I want people to see it. I'll be very brief. Okay? Babies are literally ripped out of the womb limb by limb. Their arms are ripped off. Their heads are ripped off. Ripped off. All right. This, this next one, this is what happened to my baby. Burned to death in my womb. They inject a saline solution that burns the outer layer of the baby's skin. If the baby gulps it in, it'll burn the baby's lungs. So the baby is burned from the inside out, inside my womb, my baby, my baby. Feel that. And all of us that have had abortions, I, I got to pray for my baby every day that my baby's soul is safe in the arms of the real creator and not in the hands of these fuckers, these Luciferian scumbags who are trying this is human sacrifice going on folks this is the last one I'm going to show you this is called a partial birth abortion this is for the later abortions where the babies come out 
Their feet are still kicking. Okay, the head might still be in. What they do is they jam something up into the base of the skull to kill the baby. If the baby hasn't died yet, they take a device, shove it up there, open and close the device to scramble the baby's brains. And then they suck it out with a vacuum. This is a living baby. This is a satanic practice. Abortion is satanic human sacrifice. And it must be seen for what it is. And we must pray for our children if we've, if we've done this. And for ourselves. Here's what Planned Parenthood really wants from an insider. We had a whole plan that sold abortions. And it was called sex education. Break down their natural modesty. Separate them from their parents and their values. And become the sex expert in their lives. So they turned to us. When we would give them a low dose birth control pill they would get pregnant on, or a defective condom, because we didn't buy the most expensive condoms, we bought the cheapest ones. Our goal was three to five abortions from every girl between 13 and 18. Again, we have the Rockefellers involved. All right, Aaron Russo here on the left, Nick Rockefeller on the right. Aaron says, according to Nick Rockefeller, Nick Rockefeller said, we funded Women's Lib. We're the ones who got it all over the newspapers and television, the Rockefeller Foundation. And you want to know why? There are two primary reasons. Because they wanted women to pay taxes, number one. They wanted women out of the home so they could get their hands on the kids and begin the mind control early. So this is emancipation of women. Women's Lib. Get, separate you from the kids your kids, and, and have you handing your kids over to other people to raise. People whose morals you do not know. Here we go. The nuclear family must be destroyed, and people must find better ways of living together. Whatever its ultimate meaning, the breakup of families now is an objectively revolutionary process. A Jewish feminist. And of course, our, uh, <laughs> our presidential candidate. I believe the primary role of the state is to teach, train, and raise children. Parents have a secondary role. <laughs> Let me quickly try to go into what's going on in the schools and to say I have a whole section that I'm not going to be able to get to today on the solutions. Let me quickly say one of the solutions is to please get a hold of your carnal behavior. Get a hold of your sexual attractions. Stop. If you're attracted to people based on their appearance, stop. Okay? We're looking for somebody that can meet us in the heart. Somebody that has shared similar goals and values. That has a similar vision for the future that is of a similar uh, spiritual consciousness. Not somebody who looks good. And there's much more to it, but let me also say, please do not send your children to schools. So I think I have another 10 minutes. Let me show you what's happening in the schools real quick. Of course, based on Kinsey's research, they're now being saturated. Do I got 10 more minutes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What they're saying, according to Kinsey's research, is that children need early, explicit sexual education. They need to be taught sex acts. Okay? They need masturbation and hetero and homosexual acts taught to them. Here we have an article on cradle-to-grave intimacy. All right, this, this article is saying a disturbing idea is gaining currency within the sex establishment. Very young children should be allowed and perhaps encouraged to conduct a full sex life without interference from parents or the law. We have the UN saying children as young as five now must learn about masturbation and abortion under their guidelines. 
And if you look down, the first paragraph says, children as young as five should be taught about explicit sex acts. The advice also calls for youngsters to learn about abortion, same-sex relationships, and sexually transmitted diseases. <laughs> I think it's time that we get these other fuckers off our planet and we take our planet back. Here is one book for five-year-olds in which you see a couple having intercourse. Okay, as they cuddled, your dad's penis moved gently inside your mom's vagina, and the sperms float out. Isn't that so sweet to be teaching five-year-olds? Down on the bottom to the left, I can, I'm sorry, I can't go into this too deep. On the bottom to the left, this is a little bit bigger, we have an adult masturbating an infant in a crib. You can see the energy off the baby as if the baby is having an orgasm, and the words underneath this read, Describing an orgasm. It's a difficult feeling to describe, but if you can imagine a gentle, tingly sort of tickle that starts in your stomach and spreads all over, that will give you some kind of idea of what it's like. This is education for five-year-olds where an adult is masturbating the child in the crib. These are visuals that children are being given in their books. Here's a couple more. A little more clarity of intercourse. Of course, we have to have the interracial thing because white genocide, for those who don't know about this, is part of the Jewish agenda. I, don't, I think really what we've got here, folks, is um, a desire to destroy those who are of the bloodlines that are really part of the Creator's design as opposed to the bloodlines that are coming straight from Lucifer. And I guess they think the Luciferian uh, entities masquerading as Jews on our planet, they think the white race is the biggest threat. Why? Because we have the energy of God running through us and because we know we have the power to take this planet back and we will, and we will. Yeah. But, but they are gonna push, they're gonna push the interracial thing right now because they don't want white babies being born anymore. And if anybody doubts what I'm saying, please go to my blog, birthofanewearth.blogspot.com, and read the articles on white genocide. Read the quotes coming from these people. So yes, we have to push the interracial agenda. Masturbation, of course, is very, very big on their agenda. And what, what Judith Reisman, Dr. Judith Reisman is saying is what they're doing to children right now is the same thing that a pedophile does to a child in order to prepare that child to become his victim. Right? You demonstrate the sex acts to the kids, you lower their sexual inhibitions, you desensitize the children to sex, and you sexually arouse the children. And this prepares them for the pedophile. According to Dr. Reisman, the brain data fully support the finding that sex education literally changes the neural pathways of a child's brain. And let us not forget the importance of teaching five-year-olds about transgenderism. This is in a Minnesota school. Five and six-year-old children, parents were told in an email, will listen to various books that celebrate differences and will be teaching children about the beauty of being themselves. One of those books, the principal noted, would be My Princess Boy, a story that centers on a boy who sometimes likes to do traditional girl things like wear dresses. I'm gonna remind you all of Kurt Barker's story of being raised as Kathy. I'm gonna tell you to look at Bruce Jenner who has an alter personality named Caitlyn Jenner because he's been mind controlled big time. This is the core of transgenderism, is to separate children from their core identity. And it's not rare. I could find at least a half a dozen or a dozen of these stories I could have shared with you about this now being pushed in the schools, five and six year old children. Parents are pulling children out of schools for the day when they're getting these transgender lessons. 
already said this. We're talking about having them split from their core personality. And one thing I am impressed by is that the American College of Pediatricians is calling them out on this. The bottom thing says, conditioning children into believing a lifetime of chemical and surgical impersonation of the opposite sex is normal and healthful is child abuse. That's exactly what it is. And of course, we don't want to forget encouraging homosexuality in the schools. This is a lesbian teacher demonstrating the use of a strap-on dildo to sixth graders. This is happening. This is happening. Ninth grade. Let's move along. Ninth grade. Here we are. They're being uh, given a book in English class. Here's a little excerpt from the book. Are you ready, folks? He kissed her so hard that it hurt. Oomph, she said, pushing at him. Notice where you feel this in your body so that you know what it feels like when you're being manipulated by these bastards. Relax, Matt murmured, and then he sank his teeth into her shoulder. He pinned her hands over her head and ground his hips against hers. She could feel his erection against her stomach. It wasn't the way it normally was. Here they are in ninth grade. But Josie had to admit that it was exciting. She couldn't remember ever feeling so heavy as if her heart was beating between her legs. Right, folks, that's where the heart is, right between your legs. She clawed at Matt's back to bring him closer. Yeah, he groaned and pushed her thighs apart, and then suddenly Matt was inside her, pumping so hard that she scooted backward on the carpet, burning the backs of her legs. How sexy. Wait, Josie said, trying to roll away beneath him, but he clamped his hand over her mouth and drove harder and harder until Josie felt him come. Semen and sticky hot, sticky hot semen pulled on the carpet on the floor. Welcome to ninth grade English class in the United States. You know, a father who went to the school board meeting to call these bastards out for putting this in one of his kids' books was arrested for going over the two-minute limit. <laughs> These people are criminals. Common, this is Common Core, All right, funded by Bill Gates, Major Luciferian, and the Rockefeller Foundation. <coughs> All right, here we have another beautiful little sign going out to our young people. How safe is that? Fucking, sucking. Spit or swallow, rimming, what is rimming? Licking butt. Let's all take our tongues and lick somebody's asshole because that's really sexy. <laughs> and oh, what a turn on that is for the liquor, I'm sure. Don't forget, the, don't forget the water sports, the piss play. This is what teenagers are learning, 12 year olds, 13 year olds. And let's not forget on the right side, the fisting. Fisting, shoving your entire fist up into someone's anus. Here's what they got to say about fisting. Are you ready? It's an experience of letting somebody into your body that you want to be that close and intimate with. <laughs> and it's to put you into an exploratory mode. Like, how does it feel to have a fist in my ass? Oh, I can't wait to try that. Let me also say that Planned Parenthood is teaching children, well, these are teenagers now, 12 or 13, it's okay to have sexual feelings about people of the same or opposite sex, and even about your parents or your brothers and sisters, about old people, about animals, nature, inanimate objects, and almost anything you can imagine. But let's wait. Here's a book that they're giving to students called Our Bodies Ourselves. This book talks about the, you know, the, the normalcy of sexual fantasies. One of the fantasies is, I fantasize about making love with horses. This is what the kids are learning because they are very sensuous animals, more so than cows or pigs. It's good to know. Um, <laughs> and they are also very male animals. Come on, women, let's go. Get the horses. We all want to experience this because the men... The, Horses are very male animals. I don't have time to go. Suffice to say, these kids are being shown pornographic films. 
They're throwing up from the intensity of what they're seeing. I've read at least five different stories of teenagers vomiting during their sex ed lesson because they're so, I don't know if their bodies can process the intensity of what they are seeing and what they are being told. And so they throw up to reject the evil, get it out, get it out of our bodies. Because it has no place within us or within our society or on this planet off with their goddamn heads. Okay, so I just want to stress that porn education is aiding in unrestrained sexual activity, sex addiction, haphazard conception, sexually transmitted diseases, unwanted babies, abortion, teen pregnancy, single parents, fatherless children, adultery, and the complete breakdown of human love. I am one of these children conceived in the back seat of a car during the height of the porn industry in the 1950s when everything was getting going. Okay, my parents bought into it and I am the product of that and I got to tell you that babies in a room where they are not wanted suffer. Babies born to parents who are not ready to have children and who do not want children and parents who do not love each other but are just trying to get off those children suffer, and I would venture to say 70% of the people born on this planet are an accident. They are oops babies like me, born as a side effect of fleshy indulgence, of carnal impulse, and that this is altering us. We cannot come in with our spiritual capacities intact if parental consciousness is pornographic. It is altering us, it is altering our lives, it is altering our ability to have healthy relationships, to manifest a partner that is a true match, and to live a life filled with enduring love and create healthy families. This is the goal, folks. Orgasm is this big compared to Thank you, and if you, one second. Thank you, and please, if you want the whole thing, come and buy the DVD set. Come visit me at my table. Thank you. Okay, we'll take lunch. And then